The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 3rd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. What I do want you to know is I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in but you've got a question, go ahead and send me an email. Send that out to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We're starting today with a mixed bag out there. You've got the Dow and the S&P trading lower, 57 points for the Dow, 3 points for the S&P. NASDAQ's up 6 and the Russell's up 14. Semis are off 26. Tranny's up 112. We've got a mixed bag. Gold is up 7 bucks, with silver being up 13 pennies. Light sweet crude is getting tanked. It's down $2.58, trading out at 69.07. Natural gas is off 9 pennies. is busting through a level of support. Says we uh, maybe there is no bottom inside of natural gas. The 30 Treasury up 1. One point and four ticks. 132.18 is the print there. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, we've got Super Microcomputer up 24% and 25 bucks. Top Financial Group up 19 bucks, 36%. Murphy USA, 18 bucks, nearly 7%. Inspire Medical Systems up 6% or 16 bucks. And Allegiant Travel is up 15. That's a 15% move. To the downside, it is Estee Lauder down about 19% or 46 bucks. Market Taxes down 18 bucks, 6%. Micro Strategy, 17 bucks. 5%. VCI Global, 68%. Holy shnikes there. And the Clean Harbors, Inc., they're down 10 bucks. That's a 7% move to the downside. So we got some movers, and we've got some shakers. Let's begin the day, though, by taking a look at the equity. Well, let's do this. Yeah, let's go switch over to the... Uh, nope. Let's stay right here. Equity future charts. What I want to show you, let me open up this. The NQS formed a new profile. I'm going to turn off the uh, weekly profile levels here in a moment. That way it'll clearly sit, sit out. And now let's discuss what is the meaning of these profiles. So let me get to the weeklies here. Let's turn these things off. So this actually formed yesterday. So my apology to subscribers. I, th I said there was a new profile that was forming. It has already formed. I didn't pick up on that. So it, uh, again, in any event, now this profile is slightly above the prior profile. It's first it's bullish in structure, just like the last one. So your support level hasn't changed sub substantially, but the range of support is 12,914 to 12,971, and resistance is up at 13,370. Now that's going to be important for today's action in the market. I expect we'll see some pretty decent volatility with the Fed releasing uh, their uh, decision on interest rates, but I, I would imagine that it's going to be the press conference and the uh, forecast going forward, the language, and so on and so forth. But the parameters, so the NQ is telling us that uh, don't prepare for a bear market or a change in trend. 
uh, if the change in tr the, the trend is still to the upside is what it is suggesting to you and I now. What yesterday's candle formation did was it created a three river evening star, uh, which can be a three, four, five, six, seven candle formation. But you need a minimum of three candles out here. I won't go through the details, but I do teach subscribers about that pattern because it's one of the seven candles that you really want to know how to identify it. So we do have and what this doesn't show. This black background chart does not show that price have been moving higher doing less relative energy. So there is a confirmed top inside the uh, NQ. Now, I would say if price did close below 12,914, that would be a signal that we're headed lower. And that headed lower could be for two months, like we discussed, could be for two months. But this new profile here at least makes Stevie say, hmm, something to think about. We take a look at the other uh, equity futures out here. You've got a sell the D point pattern that formed yesterday in the ES mini. It too has a sell the D. Uh, is still it too has a uh, uh, formed a three river evening star. But price found support. Both of that rising trend line, even though it didn't hit it exactly, came close enough to it. And it's, uh, but it did hold the bottom of that profile, the bottom of that daily profile. So I'd say if you get it close below that profile level, 41.18, we're headed to 40.59. Inside the Dow Equity Future contract, it closed below the bottom of its profile yesterday. That has acted as resistance this morning. That would suggest a run for the 33.228 level. The Russell 2000, even though it's got the best movement today, it's just a counter trend move at this stage. It's still trading with inside its swing point from the trading session of March 24th. It closed above 1751.20. Well, then this road's momentum indicator signal still remains intact, but it really needs to get back inside that daily profile. So that's what's going on when we take a look at those four equity future contracts. Let's switch over and take a look at the white background charts, but instead here, let's go take a look at what's going on intraday. So we'll change the panels out here. Momentarily, we'll have the intraday for the NQ. We're going to start with the NQ because Stevie believes it's really all about the NQ. The NQ's got that new bullish structured profile so it's provided you and i with some additional information it's got that roads momentum indicator top uh so which one is telling us the real truth here well let's go take a look what's going on under the covers and under the covers from a 30 minute standpoint would be this tool here this is our take a look at our taz market breadth and it's telling us how many instruments are trading above resistance that would be the top of the profile versus those trading below support which would be the bottom of the profile there's only 27 above and 39 below so on a 30 minute basis right now the nq is uh, struggling from a market press standpoint let's take a look at the other four time frames that we monitor here and those would be the weekly the daily the 240 and the uh, 60 minute let's take a look at the nasdaq and on the nasdaq here's where we've got just absolute all out choppiness confusion the weekly is slightly bearish the daily is slightly bearish the four hour is bullish and the 60 minute is bullish so if you talk about a mixed bag or a mixed set of, uh, of data points out here, when it comes to market breadth, we absolutely have that with regard to the NQ. Well, let's still study the NQ charts out here. Well, we've already gone through the daily piece of it, the new profile, so we don't have to do that. If we take a look at the uh, five-hour time frame chart out here, what do we have? We've got a wave number seven uh, top that is in place out here. I don't have any kind of a bottom, but I do have price consolidating with inside its daily profile. Four-hour time frame chart, roads to indicator top, price consolidating with inside its profile. Watch 13.155 as support and 13.244 as resistance. The uh, two-hour chart, I've got a roads to indicator top. I've got price consolidating with inside the current profile, 13.244 there. So we've got that in common with the four-hour and 13.132 for the support level, bottom of that profile. Nothing brewing on the 60-minute chart. Uh, the 30-minute uh, chart did negate a TD9 count. Remember, the 30-minute chart showed negative market breadth. 60-minute chart showed positive market breadth. So price is pulled back. It's tested basically its breakout area, or it's doing it as we speak. And that's at the 13,180.25 level. Only a close below that would suggest lower price out there. Folks, I don't really expect the markets to move a whole heck of a lot between now and 2 p.m. So some of this is just a little bit of fodder. But we're having fun. Or at least I am. We'll be back in just a few. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. Let's get to some questions out here. The first one coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. And Brent would like to take a look at both oil and natural gas. Says, I don't have any positions at present on the sidelines, waiting a possible bottom. Anything in the charts of either one that might show the potential going forward? Thanks. Always have a great day. You too, uh, Brent. So right now, Light Sweet Crude is trading out at about uh, 68.36. It is trading below the 0.786 retracement of the entire move from uh, top to from bottom to uh, top. That TD nine count bottom from back on March 20th. So first thing, Brent is, uh, and there's no bottom signal, and it broke through a TD nine count bottom pattern yesterday. So the next area of support, its next price target is likely 67.02. This is where the breakout began inside of uh, Light Sweet Crude. So you know, look for that area, and then of course. Or some bottoming signals in the intraday charts out there. If that area doesn't hold, then the next level of support would be at 61.54. That is the weekly uh, TD nine count breakout level, and there is also an A to B equal CD to the downside. It's a longer term; it's a weekly one uh, inside of the uh, uh, lights we crude out here. So that uh, you know, so I would say between sixty one fifty four and sixty seven oh two is the area to start beginning to look at a long trade out there uh, inside of uh, lights we crude. So Brent, I hope that helps you out. Um, uh, light speed crude, this would be day number three to the downside if we take a look at that consecutively speaking, that is. Um, you know, I see a lot of three bar reversals, where at least you get one day reversal, maybe two out there. Um, so this could be just simply from consecutive moves lower, we could be getting close to a bottom signal there. But so we don't want to be faked out. We want to see some type of real bottom pattern that forms inside of light speed crude. So Brent, I hope that helps you all. Let's go take a look at natural gas. Let's do that momentarily. And natural gas is busting through its um, swing low out there. So that's saying, what is that saying? Well, let's go find out. Well, it would be helpful to stick up the charts. Here we go. 
So now we take a look at natural gas. It's the daily time frame bent that I'm referring to. So on the daily time frame, you can see that this had a nice road momentum indicator bottom that formed back here on April 14th. Now, your price closes back above 2.143. It still retains that. If it closes below that, it negates it and says you need another bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. Why would we want to keep looking at a bottom? Well, if we take a look at the... Um, the, uh, the, 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 the weekly chart out here. So this is kind of setting up nicely. The weekly chart, uh, because it has broken through that low from April 14th, that is setting up that we now have a TD9 count bottom that will, well, it, it will complete this week. Um, it's gonna, it should close below the close of bar number, well, I take that back. What needs to happen on Friday, Brent, is price must close below 2.238 in order to uh, generate a confirmed TD9 count bottom, which low could take place next week. So you got that TD9 count bottom to pay attention to. And then what you'd do is you'd want to see the bottom signal on the daily time frame. And then, of course, the intraday charts, that would be helpful as well. And one of the reasons that we really want to keep our eyes focused on natural gas, at least Stevie's belief, they want to keep it focused on natural gas because we are in bar number nine on a yearly basis. Yes, it could be the bar following bar number nine that identifies the bottom out there. But uh, well, I'll take bar number nine, especially if we can get a uh, if we can get a, a weekly and a daily uh, confirmation of at least a bottom pattern, at least to go ahead and take a, another shot at it. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Brent. As always, thanks so much for joining us early, being up, and uh, sending a request to us. Let's go to the next request. That coming in from Dan inside the Tigers Dan, and Den. And uh, Dan, I appreciate all the requests that you do provide. Makes the uh, show, for me, makes it go much smoother, much easier. Let's begin by taking a look at uh, your request, which was ARWR. I do need to get to my other set of charts out here just to, to deal with the, the little delay issue. So give me a second, if you would, ARWR. And I've got that trading out at, on the white background, charge 39 bucks, 38.84 uh, to be exact as we speak right now. Now, there's an A to B equals CD pattern out here. This has achieved the one-to-one -one area. You can see that, folks, here. I'll draw in the A to B point, and then from there, we'll just simply go to the, we'll just drag this higher. We'll move this over to where the C point is at so Stevie can grab it. There's there. So now you can see you're at the one-to-one -one level. You don't just buy and sell. Well, look, I'm going to share with you my belief and the reason. And the reason is because I tried it and got my R's handed to me. You do not buy and sell every single one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Now you got a pretty decent, usually 60% of those will complete the pattern, but it's the other 40% that doesn't. Here, you need to get a bullish reversal candle. When you hit a D point with a gap to the upside and good volume, it's got 774,000 shares right now. It ain't stopping there. So where is it headed to? Well, shoot, Dano, if we look at that weekly chart, I know you and I had called out 3771. It seems to have gone through that like butter. Now, it's only Wednesday. So if price does close Friday afternoon above 37.71, the next price target intermediate term to the upside is going to be 48.48. And on a monthly time frame, although we've just begun, sounds like a song out there, uh, it is trading above that oscillator and change line. That's another bullish signal out here. Now it's got to close a month above that in order to really retain a bullish signal. But right now, that looks good. The weekly looks wonderful. The daily looks wonderful. I'm not sure what information you needed there, but a slap on the back would probably be uh, not a, a bad one out there. So uh, nice going. We took a look, I believe we took a look at uh, the consecutive days up and down, and uh, you had just a one-hit wonder yesterday. So we should see, you know, at least a two- to three-bar day rally continue inside ARWR. So congrats there on uh, that, and uh, best of luck to uh, the further trading. You wanted to also take a look at SBSW. So let's flip over to those charts out there. SBSW is Cybane, right? Something like that, Cybane Stillwater. Trading out right now at about 9.01. Uh, and uh, what is this doing? It's just a consolidation pattern inside the uh, daily time frame, but it's the weekly that you want to really keep your eyes on. Why? Because price closed above it two weeks ago. It's trading above it this week. You know, too close above it, Dan is going to say price wants to get up to 11.08. Now, look, you're still dealing with inside a bearish structure daily profile. So your resistance zone there is between 9.23 and 9.46 out there. But other than the consolidation pattern, I don't really see a whole heck of a lot going on here. 
Uh, the monthly chart, you know, this chart does not look anywhere near as good as the other one that we just looked at. Uh, you've got resistance here at the uh, 926 level. That's the bottom of that monthly uh, profile out there. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out with regard to SBSW as well. Let's take a look at our next request out here. This is coming in from McGuppy. McGuppy wanted to take a look at GF, was it GFAI? Let's see here. Yeah, GFAI. And GFAI is, I'll let you know in a minute so that I can learn how to type. That is Guard, Guard Force AI. Guard Force AI is uh, getting hammered today. So this formed, what did this form? So today, believe it or not, today McGuppy is going to be bar number nine of a TD9 count. Brr. This suggests that you could get a bottom out here in GFI, a, GFAI today or tomorrow. It suggests that. Will we? I don't know. Price has made its way all the way back, all the way back to the low on March the 15th. Now, on March the 15th, that's all the way down here. You want to know how many shares traded hands that day on March the 15th? Did any trade? 90,000 shares out here. 90,000. Now, today you're back with a bit more. You're already at 3.9 million shares. So maybe price is going to go test that swing low out there. I don't know if it is or it isn't. Um, don't do anything here today, most certainly. We should take a look at this on Thursday and Friday. So, But you've got to remind me to do that. I won't remember to do that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're now we got uh, the Dow's down 69, SB's off three, NASDAQ 100 down three, Russell's up 15, Trendy's up 109, Semis are off 36. We're taking a look at Palantir. PLTR is the ticker symbol. This is for. Uh, this is for SNP inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And we take a look at Palantir. What I don't have on a monthly basis is any kind of a bottoming pattern. It's negated a TD9 count bottom. It did it uh, several months ago, about six months ago. The weekly chart shows a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom with prices consolidating with inside its daily profile. That daily profile ranges from about uh, 718 up to 942. On a daily time frame out here, what do we have? We've got price trading back into a uh, swing point that if it breaks, it will create an A to B equals CD to downside. Now, that swing at 63 million shares. So far today, you are doing 7 million shares, 7 in 2 hours, so you're about 21 million, give or take, out there. So you're pulling back into that with lighter volume. But you want to watch that low. It's trading with inside that swing point. My assumption at this stage would be it's targeting that low of 719. If it breaks through there, 584 would be next up on its card. So the monthly doesn't look good. The weekly has got a consolidation with a bottom pattern. You need something on the daily for sure to assist you there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Palantir. Uh, the next request uh, is from uh, Jimmy, who wanted to take a look at Home Depot. And we take a look at Home Depot, Jimmy, on a daily time frame. This formed a TD9 count top, which took price almost back to its breakout level of 286.37. Didn't get all the way back there. Instead of getting to 286.37, uh, 286 it got down to 287. That works for me. So it did what it's supposed to do. And now price has made its way back up into a bullish structured profile. If this was just a counter trend move, price would have found resistance at 296.11, but it didn't. It crushed right through that on that trading day of April 28th. We're back inside this profile. My assumption would be if it closes the day above 249.93, it's going to go likely target that recent high, but more more. More likely, though, it would be the top of the profile, that TD9 count top at the 303.20 level. That would be especially true if price this week can close above its weekly oscillator and change line at 296.87. Now, you do have resistance there at 300.36. So you got 303 and 300 to take a look at. And you've got 310 and really 319. We take a look at that monthly time frame that shows a consolidation with inside its profiles as well. So not much else to report there. Um, the requests are slowing down just a tad. So let's uh, check out, uh, let me switch over to the seasonality piece of it. Let's go take a look at Home Depot, see what it uh, does typically this time of uh, year. Well, if we can get it to populate. What the heck? What is going on here? Huh. Okay. Well, that was the intention out there. That's weird. Huh. So I can get that to work. It doesn't have Home Depot. Who would have thought that? Well, it doesn't matter who would have thought that. <laughs> that is the way it is. So I can't provide you with any seasonal information, oddly enough, out there. But I do hope that helps you out with regard to Home Depot. That was from Jimmy inside the Tiger's Den. The next request coming in from Fletch, also inside the Tiger's Den. And Fletch wanted to take a look at... Um, wanted to take a look at uh, da, 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 Uber. And Rye, uh, we will get to W-E-A-T. What do you see there? Do you see a bottom? Steve, we're going to take a look at it, Steve. We're, we're going to take a look at the Uber right now. This is for uh, Fletch and Uber looking mighty fine. It is trading above its uh, prior high. I believe it is. Well, let me actually get out my other set of charts here. Just make sure where it is trading at. I show it on the white background charts at 3797 and it's 3778. So the key level that you're going to want to watch today is that swing point from back on February the 8th. That's so it was bar number seven up there. That had volume there of 109 million. You're at 23 already. So it is coming in a bit light. But if it can still close above that level, that level is 37.58. That would be a real positive. And you can see on the weekly, the number to close above from a weekly standpoint is 37.58. Uh, that would set up another A to B equal CD to the upside, perhaps. And then on the monthly chart, uh, you've got price trading right into resistance. So with regard to Uber, everything looks really good. However, Resistance on the monthly, you're trading basically into it. The weekly, you're slightly above it, but basically trading into it. The daily, slightly above it, but trading into it with lighter volume. What does that say? I would not be surprised to see these resistance levels hold. But do we have a signal of that? And the answer is we do not. 
Why don't we have a signal of that? Well, if I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, I've got a negated TD Nike out top. Price is moving higher. It's stretched with less relative energy. But that needs a bearish reversal candle. And then it closed below that green oscillator and change line for it to get any possible traction to the downside. So I don't see the top here on an intraday base, not at 11.35 in the morning. And everything looks pretty good, except it's resistance, resistance, resistance. And I don't know whether it'll take that out on a weekly basis. Just to give you an idea, the swing point there had volume of 288 million shares we're at 176 as we speak we're about halfway into the trading session so you got 176 versus uh, 288 if it can keep up this volume out here which i doubt that it will that would be a real good sign so i hope that helps you out uh, fletch with regard to uh, uber we can check to see if uber do they have uber up here on the uh, seasonals let me see uber U -B -E -R. they do so just out of curiosity, there won't be a ton of data out here. How many years? Four years worth of data? Is that it? Three years worth of data. Three years worth of data. Let's go ahead and see where we're at as of today. The case of Uber, seasonally speaking, it doesn't typically bottom until around May 11th, or it has not done that over the last three years. But that's not really a ton of data out there to uh, utilize. So let's go to the next request, which is coming in from ELO inside the Tiger's Den. And ELO wants to take a look at the SMHs. Where did Stevie put those? Here we go. So we take a look at the SMHs. They they are trading at about the 245.17 level. What the SMHs have done is they bounced up into their resistance level. That was that green oscillator and change line. And now you're back inside that profile. So if price continues to move lower, get back inside the profile out here, it could be headed down to the support zone. Now, the support zone ELO is between 239.01 and 240.88. If, on the other hand, uh, the SMHs respond positively after the uh, Fed uh, announcement, the Fed uh, meeting out here, and uh, closes above the 248.18 area. You're likely headed to 260.49. But you do have that weekly A to B equals CD. That's been confirmed. And price is uh, just consolidating with inside that profile. That's the weekly profile from 235 up to 260. On a monthly, you've got a consolidation with inside that profile as well. So the SMH is the daily time frame. You have a uh, completed by the D point pattern, the A to B, C to D, confirmed with this uh, key reversal bar, you confirmed the following day with a gap to the upside, uh, looked like it wanted to really trade higher, and it did, but it ran in that resistance at that oscillator and change line out there. So that's a real key level that you would be watching on any further moves higher out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the SMH is on a 30 minute basis, what do we have? We've got the potential for an A to B equals CD to the downside. That would occur with a close below 244.78. Technically speaking, it would be a close below 245, even Steven. But let's give it just that little bit of wiggle room, which is the breakout level of 244.79. So if the SMHs do that, then you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. We can give you the approximate price projection, at least the one-to-one -one price projection. So let's move this over here. Whoops. There we go. We move that over to the uh, C point that happens to be labeled C as part of the Chapman wave. And so the one to one would get you back around the 242 and change level out there inside the SMHs. That requires a close below 244.75. Steve Rhodes with TFNN 877-927-6648. We'll be back in just a few. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Right now, you've got the uh, Dow trading uh, down about 35 points. The S&P is flat. The Nasdaq's up seven. The Russell's up 14. The semis are down 32. We got a mixed bag out there. The next question coming in from our YouTuber, and uh, geez, I didn't write the name down. Uh, apologize, but the question was uh, about the uh, seasonal chart for the Dow specifically and the two to five year period. So at a minimum, I have to use three years worth of uh, data. And I have the Dow up on our screen. And the question was about a Fed rate change. Well, I, I've got a number of different seasonal tools with regard to the Fed. One is rate hike. So that's what I put in here. And you'll see in the kind of the center upper left area, select years to display out here. I'm just showing 2023, 2022, and 2021 out there. Well, because we've had basically rate hikes, you know, in the last uh, several, uh, last couple of years out here. But here with regard to rate hikes, this is showing you the day. So here's where we're at today. This says, you know, you make some kind of high today. It doesn't mean you take out yesterday's high, just that it's making a high. OK, so let's make sure we, we, we understand that. And then it uh, trades uh, lower and then kind of stabilizes for about four days and then begins moving higher. Now, that's over the last uh, three years out here. If we, we go from Fed rate hike to just simply Fed, Fed meeting, second day, we could do that one. I'm going to try to do that one. Fed meeting, second day. Leave it with the same time frame. I've been to three years. And here you can see, again, uh, in this case here, it says markets move lower for two days and then move to the upside. The other Fed decision uh, tools that I can choose for central banking, I've got the rate change, a rate cut, which is not likely to happen. But what, but what if we did have a rate cut out here? And instead of using just this three years, we decide to use uh, the last 10 years worth of data or the last. No, how about the last 15 years worth of data? Here's what it looks like from a rate cut standpoint if we had that. Uh, so let's take a look at what else do we have out here. We've got the Fed meeting, we've got the Fed minutes. Um, then we got the Bank of Japan, Bank of England, the ECB, uh, different cuts as well. So uh, that provided you with the information I believe that you were looking for with regard to seasonals. I'll just simply go back there real quickly here. We'll go back to what is likely to be likely to be a rate hike. Now this is over a 15 year period of time. It doesn't really change from we, is, am I using the 15? Hold on a sec. Let me just make sure that this is yeah, it's it's using a it's it's definitely using it now. Let me look at the ten years. 
yeah, it's using it now for sure. So it says we should expect the market to move lower for uh, maybe uh, three, uh, four sessions out there. Uh, that's what is typically responded from a seasonal perspective. So thanks for the question, and have a, a great day. And I apologize that I didn't write your name down when I was typing all that stuff in. Let's go to our next question. This is from Rye inside the Tiger's Den. And Rye wants to take a look at uh, ATOM out here. Adam Baum. And ATOM is trading at 9.45 or so, 9.47 to be exact. Boy, what a rocket ship this is. At America Incorporated, just a few short days ago, was trading in the five dollar area. Now we're at nine forty five. So where's this headed to? I'd have to say your next resistance level. And I'm really focused in on the monthly time frame chart. It's going to be that oscillator and change line because you are trading above the top of its profile. So that next resistance level to clear is nine seventy two. If Adam bomb can close above nine seventy two, you're off to the races. Those races should then take you to twelve ninety eight. 12.98 is the TD nine count breakdown level on the monthly on the weekly time frame. Uh, as far as any other patterns out here on a daily time frame, I've got nothing zilch nada. So this looks uh, muy bueno. I don't know what they solved out here, but it looks uh, very very good. I don't see a top, but you might get that when you get up to that uh, weekly pro uh, free, weekly oscillator change on at 9.72. So you're about you know less than 30 cents away from uh, running into some real stiff resistance or what potentially would be some really stiff resistance out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, now. Uh, counter trend move inside of this you do have wave number seven bottom letter g that was last uh, month out there if this is only a counter trend move on a monthly basis you would then find resistance no we're it's beyond that i, I apologize we already have a new profile we're trading above it skip that comment there rye i did not mean to uh, say that even though i did your next request and i was going to bring this up this is called a free trade for everybody that's listening in or I believe it's a free trade, or at least uh, it is a confirmed, right now it appears to be a confirmed bottom inside of wheat. Now we're taking a look at here, what Ryan wanted me, or I believe, wanted me to take a look at uh, was WEAT. That is the bottom right-hand panel chart. Now, if you go look at the holdings with inside WEAT, the wheat, uh, it's, it has July, September, and December of 2023 uh, future contracts, and almost evenly so. So it's really important to take a look at those. We'll take a look at this. Yesterday, we got TD9 count bottoms in each of those. Today, we're getting Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern. So on a daily basis, what Wheat has done is given us a bottom signal. Now, in each case, just like we were taking a look at, like Rye had us take a look at on that other chart, we took a look at Adam and said, hey, that weekly oscillator and change line could be some stiff resistance. Now, here's the issue. Here's the fly in the financial ointment. Each of these contracts are sitting right at those resistance levels. So, Rye, what I would love to see is at the end of the day, a close above that to then say, we got action, Jackson. Now, that action may only take price up to its TD9 count breakdown levels. Those are up at 590, uh, 696 on the July contract, 706 on the September contract, 721 on the, uh, on the December contract, and uh, 706 on the September contract out there. So wheat looks really good. Now, what really looks good about wheat, folks, if I can't sell you about wheat and why you should be looking at it here, this set of charts might do that for you. And that's looking at the weekly so now we got the weekly charts here. Again, still WEAT. It's going to maintain those same contracts, but now you take a look at the weekly. The weekly July and September contract confirmed TD9 count bottoms last week. Now, we have to see closes above those lows in order for that to happen out there. And you can see that the weekly oscillator and change line is a real booger out here. That is a real resistance level. But if price closes above that, even though you got other profile issues to contend with, it would likely be signaling to you and I we've got that change in trend in wheat. Now, the December contract uh, isn't participating with regard to the TD9 counts out there. So it would really have to be based upon what's going out of july in september at this stage of the game so we've got what looks like a great bottom out here the question is can we get wheat to close above those oscillator unchanged lines and i just don't know the answer to that question but thanks so much for the request out there the next one is to take a look at gdx so let's get back to uh the uh, three panel set of charts out there is this where we have it no that was adam so let's go take a look at the GDX, and I apologize, I don't recall, I just wrote it down, but didn't recall, didn't write down who asked me for it. So with regard to the GDX, the GDX looks mighty fine. Why does it look mighty fine? Well, on a daily time frame, you're above the top of the profile, you are above its green oscillator and change line. That suggests at least a run for its recent high out here. That recent high is a swing point from April the 13th. That's anywhere traded between the range of 30... 
543 up to 3610. The weekly chart says, hey, I, I, I like what you're saying, Steve-O. It's just that I've got a new profile resistance level, and that's up at the uh, 3515. So expect a battle. At 35.15, so far the intra-week high has been 35.10. So it's resistance, resist. That's the level, 35.15, that you need to see a close above. That's where the battle is taking place at out here. But otherwise, everything inside the GDX looks pretty good. Now, look, on a 30-minute basis, this is telling you to prepare for a potential, and I do say potential, top. Because you are in bar number nine as we speak right now. Let's update that chart out here. So I would say by 1230, the GDX is suggesting that we should see a pullback. Now, even if we get a TD9 count top, which we will, it's still a neutral signal. Price above that green oscillator change line and above the top of his profile. But a little bit of retracement seems to be in order. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, so uh, next question coming in from Charles. Charles uh, from Framingham, Mass., a veteran. Uh, thanks for your service there, Charles. He's in uh, GFI Goldfields, and his question is, do we see it getting to 17 bucks? How about if I give you 1692? Will you let me round down eight cents out there? The reason I come up with 1692, Roger, is that is the TD9 count breakdown level on the weekly time frame chart. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, uh, prices above resistance, uh, you've taken out a swing point, a prior swing point. The daily time frame doesn't show any 
kind of a topping signal. If it did generate a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rhodesman to indicator top. But 1692 looks like you've got that in the cards. Not that it can't get up to 17. The actual real resistance level on this on the monthly time frame is going to be up at 1720. So at this stage of the game, it does look like uh, that is likely outcome on a. Uh, oh, this is a 30 minute chart. Why do I have that? I don't know. But let's change this to the 30 minute out here real quickly 30 minute chart here for gfi uh now the 30 minute chart is showing that uh in the next four minutes we could get a confirmed roachman to indicator top it's still neutral price above profile and it's also during change on but if it closes below 1638 you're headed to 1621 out there so i'd watch that for gold fields but it does look good i'd stay with the trade i don't have any reason for you to get out of it and 1692 should be its target so thanks for the request out there and again thank you for your service to our country the last last request out here is aspn coming out with earnings uh, tomorrow and uh let me just get over make sure this is up oh, geez stevie where is it uh, ASPN trading around 617. I just want to make sure ASPN, which is with inside its uh, daily bearish structured profile out there. Yeah, 614. So, Dan, um, you've got resistance at 637. This has got trend line resistance out here as well. If you just start from the swing point from or you start from the high of three, March 22nd out there, you can draw a line down there. Price is trading into that resistance area. Um, you've got a rose momentum indicator bottom and consolidation with inside its profile. So the weekly has got a nice TD9 count and rose momentum indicator bottom with price consolidating with inside its profile. So the weekly say to us, you want to get a close above 644. If you get a close above 644, Dan, you're headed to 849. Folks, stay tuned. we got great programming. The fireworks begin at about 2 o'clock. I would say more likely 2.30 is when the real show begins. And I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks again for joining us. Be safe out there. Take care.